I mean, every time I think about it, I just laugh. Like, he's playing the U.S. Open. It's unbelievable. It, um, it, I just get just as much joy out of him playing well as I do playing well. Um, and it's, it's the truth, and I, I think he knows that. Um, I, I was more pumped up when he shot 66 in Royal Oaks. Way more pumped up than he was <laughs> yeah. when he shot 66 he was, in Royal Oaks. Yeah, I, I mean, I was like, hey, it was a good round of golf. But Johnny's in the car just, just hitting me. Just, <laughs> Dude, that was the greatest golf I've ever seen. Da, 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 all this it's stuff. true. It's because we, 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 we've been on this it, journey together. Like, we talk about it all the time. We talk about swing. We talk about mental game all the time. And for it to come together for those three rounds and that he's playing in the U.S. Open, it, I don't know how to, uh, for me, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a cool feeling. It's, for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I don't think it's hit me yet. I mean, I'm going to the U.S. Open, playing my first USG event as, I mean, and it's a major nonetheless. And uh, golf's toughest test, supposedly. So I'm excited for it, but I, I don't think it's going to hit me that I'm actually playing it until they announce my name on the first tee Thursday morning at 9.27. Yeah, it's pretty fun stuff. I mean, Johnny's been caddying for me, obviously, for like the last two weeks or so, starting at Royal Oaks, local qualifying. I mean, I wasn't really sure how it was going to go. We talked about golf a lot, and it just everything kind of clicked. We've been living together for two years, mm -hmm. and so I know the guy pretty well. Obviously, he knows me better than I know myself because <laughs> he's said some good things when I'm over the ball under pressure, and it's helped me be successful. It I, honestly, I honestly think I know his game better than he does. Uh, we talk about it all the time. And um, it, it's just all about the process. We always talk about the process of hitting a good shot. And every single shot, it was clear your hips, finish your swing, pose your finish. And actually, like, he had to buy me a drink if he didn't pose his finish. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was just like, it didn't matter where the ball went. If he did that, it was going to go well. And no matter where it went, he was going to pose that finish. And honestly, that is the sole reason why he hit the shots he did coming down the stretch. Hundred percent. No, no doubt. I mean, he, he'd say, right after I clear your hips, hold that finish. And there's people watching now, so make sure in the look, playoffs, make sure you look pretty. In make the sure playoffs, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you look ugly otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when the, when the cameras were actually out there watching Nick, I'm like, you know what? It's not just for drinks now. It's you got to actually look pretty for the camera. You gotta, yeah, man up. <laughs> take that picture. Look, look good. No, no jealousy at all. <laughs> There's none at all. No, not at all. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm just as happy him going than, than me. Um, I, think he, I, I honestly think he knows that. Um, when he made that punt on the last one, I, I, I almost cried. I literally almost cried. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think our friendship's kind of on, on a different level. Um, we've, and, we've known each other a long time, and so it's like, for us to, I don't think it was a really a jealousy thing. Like, we want the best for each other. And so it's like, you know, when you see him do well, it's like, I'm happy for him. Like, I mean, and so it's like, there's no jealousy issue. I'm going to say one thing. I bet he's a little jealous of my dad caddying for me <laughs> and not him because <laughs> he has to stay home. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm really bummed out. I'm yeah. not jealous. I, I just, I feel like we went there, to, we, we know, it was we our talk, journey it, together. It was our journey, yeah. and the fact that I'm not going to like support him even, I don't even care about the caddying part, really. Yeah, yeah. I just think that, I, th I honestly think that would be cooler for, for his dad caddying. You know, his dad's been there, <laughs> he's been there forever, yeah, literally. True. I know. Um, and, <laughs> literally. You know, financially, you know, emotionally, physically, he's, there, he's been there forever, and to have it on, you know, ends on, end on Father's Day like it does every year. Yeah. His yeah, first one, cool. his, his dad has to caddy for him, honestly. I just wish I could be there to like walk around practice rounds, yeah. like, just like get little tips and stuff like that. That was, that was the hardest part, I think, honestly. I mean, I, just you get done playing 36 holes and you're beat and you just want to go to sleep. And usually you sleep like, like a baby that night. And I got, we got back, got done at like 8.50, yeah. drove to Eugene, got dinner, service wasn't great, <laughs> took it like an hour. And uh, we got back to our hotel around 11. And we were just, uh, I would toss and turn until 1 in the morning, and I couldn't, couldn't sleep. And I'd get up at 5.30, 5, 6 o'clock, and it's just, uh, it, was, it was the worst night of sleep I've ever had. But it was, <laughs> it, it worked out in the end. I had enough energy the next morning. Um, for me, it was, I passed out. But, um, <laughs> was, you, know, you know, honestly, like, we taught, it was so, I told Nick the night before, I'm like, I'm so glad that you're playing 10. I'm so glad he bogeyed it. He, he made he made four bogeys in the two rounds, and two of them were on ten, and that's where he started the playoff. I'm like, dude, this is why this is, and we walked off the tenth tee, and he had a pretty good drive, just in the right rough, like we like like we talked about. Yeah. And I'm like, this is why we have these talks. 
for this moment right now. This is why we talk about the process. This mm -hmm. is why we have these talks till two in the morning. We're just talking about yeah. random, random stuff about golf. Just on the couch watching TV. Yeah, you know, just and, and like out. this is why we talk about yeah. it. Yeah. And the, to to play the way he did for the 36, coming down the stretch, the last th like the last few holes, getting dark to play the way he did in the playoff was, I mean, I, I it was such an unbelievable feeling. It was awesome. Yeah. Did it make it harder? Uh, no, I, I liked I liked it actually a lot more than knowing than some no name guy. I mean, I kind of it kind of like heightens your it's, it's, I don't know your state of focus, and so even I mean even for the U.S. Open you're going to be pumped up to play. But and it, he's a duck, and you know going for the U.S. Open, and it was uh, it was it was really cool. I, I liked I liked winning. <laughs> No, no, never, not at all. I was, it, surprisingly, I was very cheery and calm. I felt very calm before I teed off. It was, yeah. it was weird. It was, I wasn't, wasn't nervous as I expected. I was just going out there to play golf and have fun. I mean, I was so, we've, we've talked about the process so much and it's so cliche now, but it's just, it's almost rooted inside us that it's just, we're going to do this and whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. And so I was comfortable with what I was going in with and who I was playing against and, He's a good buddy of mine, obviously, but uh, it was fun to come out on top. Well, actually, last hole of the playoff, we're on the third hole of the playoff. It's cold in the morning, and uh, I, I kind of hit it down the right-hand side, and Marinicki was over off in the trees. I didn't really notice. I was kind of in my own game, in my own process, kind of what we've been working on. Mm -hmm. So I was going through well, but and I, it was like 187 pin. 80, it was 82 pin, 70 front, 96 back. 96 back. And the one, reason why I know that is because I always remember that shot. Yeah, and it so, was perfect. <laughs> and so we, uh, I was, I'm standing over it. I'm a little pumped up. I just nuked a seven iron from 178 to the middle of the green, so I was pretty pumped. And yeah. ten. And so uh, I was like, hey, I want to hit, I want to hit five. What do you think about five? You know, I can carry 180 right to the pin. And Johnny goes, no, dude, no. It's a, it's a four. I think you hit a good solid four right to the. It's not going to go uh, over 196. You can hit that smooth to the back, and, it's, and it's, you're in great position. Um, I think with that shot, I saw where Dan was, and it wasn't good, um, which was a huge part of it. But the, the four iron flew 192 on the last hole, even though he didn't hit it very good, but it was downwind. And that shot was straight into the wind. Um, there was no need to mess with that bunker. And like Nick doesn't hit a four iron 196 with no wind. Hmm. And it was into the wind. Um, and we, we <laughs> and about, it was, he hits it about 196, let's say. Okay. But into the wind. Um, he just needed to make a good swing, and we picked a, a tripod, like one, or like you the picked the right leg yeah, of the tripod. Yeah, of there, a tripod behind right the behind the green. It was 15 feet left, and the wind was kind of coming in a little from the right, kind of like this, and it did not move off the right tri right side of that tripod. It was it, it landed like 185. Would have carried the bunker easy. It was right on his line. It was perfect. Yeah, stuck that finish, so to speak. <laughs> We were walking up the green though, and something, something my dad has always said to me, you never know when that one, next one could go in. And that goes for me and him. So, you know, I was expecting him to make mm -hmm. that chip from off the green. I even told Johnny yeah. as we walked up to the green. Oh. So I was expecting him to make that chip. And when he didn't, I knew that I had two putts to go. And uh, it was a little faster than I expected, so I rolled out to about three, four feet. And uh, that was probably the most I've ever felt my heart beat before a putt. I think, I mean, it was just my, it was, my chest was going. It was, I just took a deep breath though. And it was like, you know, you got, you got four feet to go to the open. You made a thousand of these, just one more stroke. And then you got a tee time on Thursday. Let's go. The, another cool part about that putt was Nick does chalk line putts. Um, it's just like a straight line. You find a straight putt on the putting green and you just knock in four yeah. or five footers and he hits like 50 to hundred of them in a row. Every time he goes and practice putting, which is probably five times a week, something like that. Um, so before we, before he played Royal Oaks, I, I was out there with him, like watching the chalk line, making perfect strokes all the time. And so when he played that round at Royal Oaks, and a lot of the times at, at Admiral Valley, I'm like, dude, it's just a chalk line. It's yeah, just a chalk yeah. line inside right. And that's what that one was. That's and a, it, it, was, it was a perfect stroke. Yeah, that's the greatest center. part about Johnny knowing me so well is that he knows what I do behind the scenes. And so it's like when I am in those pressure situations, you tend to go back to what you originally do. And so since I've done that for so long, it's like, it, it just that reassurance. He's he's in, he's vocal enough as a dude. Obviously, we all know that. But <laughs> <laughs> but he he, uh, he he says the right things at the right moment, and uh, it just kind of calms me down. I just and I have had a lot of success, so credit a lot to him. 
that 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 is the sole reason I think we work together as a player caddy relationship because it's kind of you know you need a guy out there to you know kind of keep you lighthearted almost because I tend to get competitive a little bit more over top serious wise and Johnny's just out there you know off, <laughs> just cracking a smile at everything he sees <laughs> you know? he can't stop laughing at the dumbest stuff so <laughs> but it's uh it's good no he keeps me lighthearted and when Nick plays I think he gets he just looks like he's mad a lot um, whether too he's playing, we're not, too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks from an outsider's perspective. I'm not an angry guy. No, you're not at all. You're not at all. It looks like you're mad though. Yeah. And so when he hits a bad one, he like I let him do his thing a little bit, like you know, get it out, and I'm like, hey, process, dude. It's like this is the next one. Um, and coming from a caddy's perspective, an outside perspective, um, it's different because when I'm in, when I'm playing as well, it's the same thing. You just you know you get mad and you don't realize what's important, and what's important is the next shot. And, swinging your hips through and posing that finish. <laughs> first, tweet, first tweet last night was uh, <laughs> third time's a charm, hashtag US Open. So <laughs> I thought that was appropriate first tweet. Um, yeah, I'm not a big social media guy. Obviously, <laughs> Johnny's about 100 times more than me. So I get all my social information through him. <laughs> Pretty much. So, so are you, or you sent out your first tweet? Sent out my first tweet, yeah. Have you got a lot of new uh, Twitter followers or... It, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, actually a lot. It was driving back from Eugene, I mean, I get back and there's, you know, it's, it's upward of 40 text messages and emails and, I mean, friend requests and it's just like, it was unbelievable the amount of people who wanted to talk and say congratulations and it was, uh, it was pretty cool to have everybody and all the support. I hope so, I hope so. Uh, I, I like the relationship we have going, so I told him that too. As we were playing, I was like, hey, yeah. you know, you know you're, you're first in line. If, you ever, if we ever have this opportunity again, I'm calling you up. I, I, we, we talked and it was like, you know, when you come in the top 16 and you get to play next year, I'll be there. <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I, I couldn't be more bummed out not going. Like, I, I've thought about it so much. Yeah. Um, it sucks, it sucks. But uh, I, I also think that Bill, Nick's dad caddying for him, is, it'll be a way sweeter, cooler, more memorable experience, and I wouldn't want to take that away from them. And we'll have we'll have more opportunity, I think. Yeah, hopefully for sure.